Hello everybody. I'm just sure he'd get hot quickly. The funny little weather. This little cat has been very naughty. She ran away a little while ago. So she's not supposed to be out, but she was a good girl today, so I let her out. Supposed to be banned for a week, but anyway. It's been three days, I think. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk, and I've been talking a bit about planets, but there was something I was looking up that sort of made me think about it a bit, was that I know that a lot of bits of the Atlantis story are false. Now we know that Atlantis was a real place. We know that there is a place that matches the description that is exactly where it's supposed to be in Mauritania. So the existence of Atlantis is not really in any serious dispute. The question is how many of the stories are true? How many are just simply made up? And how many are changed or perhaps copied from another story? So I was looking at the story of Albion, which you may know as Great Britain. But Albion was actually Great Britain plus France and plus Ireland as well, all, all as one country. And we know this for a fact that they were one country, they were all joined together. And there was also a significant landmass that was, and we're not sure how much was above the water at the same time, but certainly we know that a part that's now sunken, which is to the east of England and Wales and Britain, it used to connect all the way from Britain pretty much up to um, Scandinavia. And they call that land the Doggerlands. So the bit that's sunken they call the Doggerlands, and they call it that nowadays named after a particular type of boat called a dogger and that's a boat that's in Scandinavia and of course we know it wasn't called that then it was just the whole part that plus that was called uh, Albion and there's been a few lies about Albion and the claim that Albion was never actually used for Britain well it wasn't used for just Britain it was used for Britain Ireland and France and this now sunken place all together um, for the whole lot and it was all one country and we know there were different other stages where England conquered France and France conquered England but that's and that's kind of why they hate each other but because they used to be one country and why Wales and Scotland I mean you know we used to be one country often do end up hating each other now one thing that I found telling was when I was looking at the great flood myths from around the world one story that comes from Ireland is that their entire country was destroyed. Not Ireland, but Albion. Because they acknowledged that they were a part of Albion, part of a great landmass um, that was about twice the size of France, or about the size of France plus Spain, perhaps, if you want to think of it that way. And the whole place was destroyed. And they say that every single part of it sunk into the ocean, just killing every single person that lived there. Everyone. No survivors. So not a sort of, what a disaster, but a few people got out or, you know, everybody died, every single person. And that's what they say. They say every person that lived there died. And so it's hard to get accurate populations from that time, but they say there were three billion. So let's just take that on board. It might have been one billion, might have been a bit less, who knows. But whatever the number, all of them died. Now, after the collapse, some of it came back and of course mainland France we're assuming wasn't ever sunk into the ocean but and that was of course part of Albion but the part that the other part the only part that came back was Britain and Ireland and there's a few other little islands as well um, or air I think is how they say Ireland in Irish so that part came back but when it came back there was nobody living there at all not a single soul so then what happened was they say then we came from another destroyed land. So what are they saying that they came from? And I was sort of trying to work it out and I thought, well, I mean, a lot of people have assumed they meant Spain. And it's possible, but I mean, it, it could, they could have just came from mainland France as well. That's a possibility. I mean, if France itself wasn't completely destroyed, but they're saying that everybody on France died as well. So they all died as well. Um, it's hard to know if that's literal, but you know, if we assume that's the case, then they wouldn't have gone over there. They might have, 
But let's, let's assume another thought, and let's say that when they say they sailed over, and not very many places in the world had sailing fleets at the time, and the one that was, of course, known to have one was um, Atlantis, or Moo, as it was called by the Mayans, and who knows what its real name was. Might have been Moo. More likely to be Moo than Atlantis, but it might have been another name. But they, they weren't that far away. Mar Mauritania to England is... It's still a little way, but, you know, a couple of days' travel. And they were probably friends with each other. If no other reason, then Moo means red, or red lands, and Albion meant white lands. And so if you think, you know, and, and a lot of historical evidence suggests that they were friends at the time. Not, the, not part of the same empire, so Atlantis hadn't conquered Albion, although they had conquered other lands, but friendly, as in... You know, we're helping you out. So if Albion was completely destroyed and was sunk whilst Atlantis was pushed up, and we know Atlantis was pushed up because it's 100 metres up in the air now. So we know that the story that Atlantis was sunk is a lie. Or at the very minimum, it was sunk and then raised up later, but most likely a lie. Now, and that's not what happened to Atlantis. Atlantis was destroyed. I mean, we know, we know where it was. It was destroyed 12,000 years ago. Rich had structure, had people living on it 126,000 to 12,000 years. And we know all that. We know that there's no doubt about that. But the story of a, a place being sunken in a single day at the time matches almost exactly to the sinking of Albion. Now, some people say, well, that happened 7,000 years ago, not 12,000. Give or take a few thousand years, I think we can sort of agree that it's within the vicinity and that some of these stories are guesses more than anything. And certainly the story from Ireland says that it was from 12,000 years ago, not seven. And 7,000 is kind of used to match in with the biblical timeline, which suggests that the Great Flood happened six or 7,000 years ago. Whereas, I mean, the Cataclysm happened 12,000, not six. Anyway, so whatever the timeline was, um, We've got that situation that 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 when the Greeks were referring to it, they were referring to Albion sinking. That happened the same time period that Atlantis was sunk, or well, Atlantis was destroyed at least, and probably from the same the same sort of situation from the meteors flying. And of course, we know that other things happened as well. I mean, whenever we have a cataclysm, the sea levels change. And we have some things, some things go up, some things go down, and that's every cataclysm that's ever been recorded or, or looked about. That sort of thing's happened. And we know that about 65,000 years ago, there was a cataclysm that forced a section of the sea between Madagascar and Australia, and also between Madagascar and India, to raise, rise up to allow people to walk to Australia and settle there for the first time. And we also know that a, another cataclysm about 40,000 or 43,000 years ago, lifted up Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and um, Malaysia, Philippines, and all the Southeast Asia, which were previously underwater, lifted them up, and then allowed them to be settled by the Chinese and other people from other parts of mainland Asia, and including Japan, which was above the water already. Now, I don't know which ones were up and which ones weren't, but I know that they were lifted up, and that, that's why that's the, the time that they were able to settle. And we also know the first people went to Italy and Greece about 40,000 years ago, and it's quite likely that they were underwater um, before that. So they were created about 40,000 years ago, as in they became land masses. And of course we know that after that, the Greeks, Greece and Italy were settled from Atlantis. And we know that. And I mean, some other people say it's from somewhere else, but that, but that happened because they, they were under sea before that, or probably were. So the idea that, you know, it, it has to have gone down is a bit silly, and we know that it has gone up, and we know that the area has salt water, it's got whale bones, it's got sea life in there. It pretty obviously was part of the sea. I mean, cataclysms are big deals. They're, they destroy pretty much all life on Earth, not just humans, but all everything. They make things go extinct. They do all sorts of terrible things. <clears throat> so what we're looking at now, and I've 
this is just my personal theory, is that some of the people from Atlantis who weren't all killed, and we know they weren't all killed, the, the, the city was destroyed, the main capital city was, but the country wasn't. And some of them, look, they were, they were at war with Egypt, so there's no way they went to Egypt. But they could have gone to Albion and been those settlers in Ireland at least. Probably explains why they have a fascination with red hair and fairies and all that sort of thing, because red hair was a big thing in Atlantis. And um, they might have gone to Germany, which also, that, that was, well, it wasn't called Germany then, but um, the low land, the low countries, they might have gone there. And they've got a big fascination with fairies and red hair there as well. And they also, as we know, they did go to Central America. So they, they could have fled in a few different directions. And they probably did. And uh, I mean, they might have gone to Greece and Italy. I mean, it's possible. Of course, I've looked, looked it up and of course the, the story is that uh, Athens defeated them in a war. I'm going to call bullshit on that. There's no way that Athens, as one city, was anywhere near strong enough to defeat Atlantis at that time. It's just not even possible, uh, considering the population difference we're talking about, the technology difference and all the rest. Um, even if we assume that Atlantis did settle Greece, which I think is a fair assumption, and that the Greeks were Atlanteans originally, um, which is a reasonable assumption. They might have been mixed with a few other cultures as well, but let's just say that they came from there. Even if we assume that and they had some of the technology, they wouldn't have had all of the technology and they had nowhere near the population. And you're talking about just one city. It's an absolute bullshit lie. So I think that they're sort of claiming responsibility for the destruction of Atlantis when they couldn't have had anything to do with it. So there's a lot of bullshit to work through and there are a lot of lies about that, but that doesn't mean that Atlantis itself was a lie. Um, there certainly is a place that fits that concentric rings description that is in south of the Atlas Mountains and otherwise matches all of the description that had people on it for that period of time. But the rest of it, a lot of it, is bullshit. And when people talk about an allegory, they're not talking about that the whole thing's bullshit because parts of it were true. But I think when they're talking about the sinking, they're talking about Albion. They're talking about England. Well, England, Ireland, Wales, or actually the Doggerland. That's the part that sank, not Atlantis. Atlantis rose. <laughs> so if we can sort of swap them around and then understand why they lied, then we can sort of say, well, this is probably pieced together. This is what really happened. And that doesn't make Atlantis false. It just means that some of that story was a lie. All right, so that's it for me. Bye-bye.